Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So this was a question that we looked at on a recent live stream that I did about the product construction. So what I want to be able to show you is that the product construction does not guarantee reachability or minimality. So what does that mean? So recall that the product construction is a construction that involves two DFAs, if I can spell DFAs, D1 and D2, and will produce a DFA, a D, with the language of D being either the union of the two languages or uh, the intersection of the two languages. So what do I mean by does not guarantee reachability or minimality? So let's address the first one first. So what I mean by this, let's suppose that D1 and D2 have no minimal, uh, not minimal, I'm doing the wrong one, have no unreachable states. And what do I mean by that? Let me turn off notifications. So what do I mean by that? Well, suppose that we have the machine D1 right here and we have the start state right here and then some other states inside of it, but it's not possible for there to an, exist a state out here that is unreachable from any state within this uh, purple circle right here. So this is not allowed. So what can we say? What can we say about the DFAD that we make in the product construction. So remember that the product construction always has states of the form PQ, where P is a state of the first one, D1, and Q is a state of the second one, D2. So what can we say here? Well, if D1 and D2 have no unreachable states, then it seems logical that there's no unreachable states in the product DFA. But I'm going to give you a counterexample to show why that's the case. So let's look at a DFA D1 right here, where there's a state Q0, it loops on 0, goes on 1, to a final state called Q1, which loops on everything. So just a simple two-state machine, which means that we must have at least one occurrence of one, and if we don't, we'll never accept. And D2, we're gonna, you can keep it the exact same machine, but I'm gonna flip the final and non-final states, and we'll see why I'm doing that in a second. So uh, I'm just gonna flip the final and non-final states, but the structure otherwise is exactly the same. So, if we look at the product DFAD, let's say that uh, for union here, so whether or not it's for union or intersection or whatever, that's just changing what the final states are. But otherwise, the product DFA is exactly the same. So, the, and also what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename these states to be R0 and R1 to make it clear that when I'm referring to one machine versus the other one. So because there are two states in these machines, the product construction will make four states, two times two. So the four states are going to be Q0, R0, Q0, R1, Q1, R0, and Q1, R1. So what are we going to do here? Well, the start state is going to be the start state corresponding to the original two machines, so Q0, R0. So that's going to be the start state. And for the transitions, well, we got to figure out where both machines go on 0 and 1. Well, let's see. Well, from Q0 and R0, on transition 0, they just stay in the same place because they're the same machine other than the final states. So these are going to loop on 0. And on 1, the first one's going to go to Q1, and the second one's going to go to R1. So I'm going to have a transition down to here on 1. 
And for Q1R1, well, they loop on everything. They loop on 0 and 1. So this state is going to have a self-loop on 0 and 1. Now what are we going to do? What about these other two states over here? Well, let's suppose we're in Q0R1 right here. So then that means on input 0, both states are looping on 0. So that means I'm going to have a self-loop on 0 here. And on 1, it's going to, again, go to the Q1R1 state, as we can see. Q0 goes to Q1. R1 will just stay there. And something similar for the other state you can verify for yourself. And we could have actually even avoided these two states because if we looked at the machine that we got from, that we did with these two states right here, we can easily see that both of these states are complete in a certain sense, in that they both have transitions on 0 and 1, so we didn't need to do additional work here. So, in fact, these two states, the ones on the outside here, this one and this one, are redundant. They are unnecessary. And the simple explanation for why these states are unnecessary is that this combination of states, Q0 and R1, and the other combination, Q1, R0, are impossible to reach by any uh, DFA, uh, by any string in this DFA, because, well, you can actually verify it for yourself here and as well here. But for a simple explanation here, well, they're the exact same machine, so either we're in both of the, the zero states or in both of the one states. So what are the final states in this thing? Well, we're doing union here. So remember, the final states are the ones that are either final in either machine. So if a state has Q1 in it anywhere, then uh, that will be final. So if it has a Q1 in it somewhere, I'm going to make it final. So these two states are final. And if we had an R0 at anywhere, that's going to be final too. So that means that this state is um, uh, not final. And how can we verify that this is the case? Well, if we look at the pair Q0R1, neither of the states was final. So when we're doing the product construction, it can't possibly be the case that both of these, uh, that this state is going to be final because neither of the originals was final. So what can we actually verify about this? So this goes back to the minimality question. So if the two DFAs were minimal in the sense that uh, like these two DFAs are minimal, we can't make a smaller DFA with in terms of number of states. And we can verify this here because if we can try to get one state out of this, we can either get sigma star or empty set with one state. That's all we can do with the DFA. But here they're not sigma star or empty set because they both accept something and not accept something else. And so you need two states. Well, both of them have two states. So therefore, we, um, these are minimal DFAs. But what about this one? So for union, well, what is this here? Well, note that these two DFAs were the complements of each other. The final states of one were the complement of the final states of the other one. So the union of a language and its complement is sigma star. And we can verify this for ourselves in this DFA by looking at these two states and seeing that every single string is accepted. So the language of D in this case is sigma star. And even if after we remove the unreachable state, so let's say we remove these two states, now we're left with a two-state machine where every state is reachable from the start state, but it is not minimal still. And why is it not? Well, we can make a DFA for sigma star by just using a one state with looping on everything. So that actually tells us that the product construction does not um, keep the properties necessarily of the two DFAs that you give it. 
not every state is reachable, even if the states in the original machines were reachable, and if the two original DFAs were minimal in terms of number of states, then it's not necessarily true that the product DFA has um, a minimal number of states, even if you remove all the ones that are unreachable. So I hope that was interesting. Let me know if you were able to find out uh, or able to prove this in a different way. As always, please subscribe, give a like on this video. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Come join us on Twitch and my Discord server. All the links are in the video description. And if you want to support this channel, additionally, you can do so on Patreon. But I will always be making these videos completely for free for everyone forever. So I hope that was interesting. I will see you next time. Thank you.